hey, this week we got a commission. The challenge here is to create something that fits into the elemental plane of fire. Let's see what I come up with. Okay, let's get started. For this diorama, I cut out a fairly large hardboard base and made a beautiful plan that I might not even follow. I just made sure that I knew where the most important objects are placed. So first we need an uneven ground with volume, mainly to facilitate the lava river. I decided to use XPS foam. I cut out sheets of foam that cover everything except the river. I glued on the bits and then let the glue dry completely before continuing. Next, I shaped the ground using my knife. I worked roughly without thinking too much. We just need to make edges roundish, especially at the river. Okay, I have lots of bark. Instead of using foam, I'll make the shrine building from bark to better include all forest dwelling people. These are real big chunks of pine bark. Here we go, I took the biggest bark and started cutting. It will become the floor of the shrine. I struggled for a while, but ended up getting a nice flat piece. This is very simple, it doesn't even have to be flat on all sides. The floor goes approximately here. It will somehow stand on cliffs made from bark. I broke off some suitable pieces and tried them on until I liked it. I also made one long, pointy and dramatic looking stone formation. It looks quite good. We need more. Three pointy and dramatic stone formations should do. I also made two smaller bits uh, or rocks that are placed on the empty areas. Since I'm gonna ship this diorama at a reasonable price, it can't be over 11 centimeters high. Well, I'll have to paint the most epic bits separately. For now, I glued on the remaining bits. I continued by filling large gaps with smaller bits, lots of glue, then chunks of bark, and finally small bits to cover up the excess glue. It's a shame that I can't glue these bits on yet. For now we can add some little bits that make the pointy bits fit in better. Alright, I have no idea how to make the ground look like it's made of ash and burnt things. My idea was to first glue on a few chunks of bark along with small crumbles. The rest is covered with bark sawdust. This was a weird idea, but as I sprinkled on more and more bark dust, the idea became better. I might not even have to paint this, I thought. Looks quite good already. I also placed a chunk here which will be floating on lava. Lastly, before letting all of this dry for a good while, I covered up a few more places. It was also time to clean this horrible mess. 
Later, I checked back on the diorama and covered a few bad spots with more bark sawdust. Next, I decided to make some kind of a shrine using an electric tea light. My first concern was to get the plastic covered up, and no, I don't want to do any wiring. First, I drilled a hole into a suitable bark bit. That works well. I roughly rounded the top piece and then cut more bits from bark. Once I had the bits ready, I tried to make a better flame using hot glue. I kept the glue at low temperature to have greater control. In the end, my flame looked quite okay, better than the factory one. However, I thought I could make it better by instead shaping a hot glue stick with a knife. Now it looks a bit like a glowing crystal, which is much better. Alright, I used plenty of hot glue to attach all of the surrounding bark bits. All the mess can be covered up later. I stuck on a few bark bits wherever there were gaps. Later I applied plenty of PVA glue in gaps, then sprinkled on bark bits and sawdust. After deciding to make most of the diorama from bark, the stairs might have gotten a bit more difficult to make. I cut flat bits that are sturdy enough. We need to keep this durable. Okay, these are about good. I tried them on and then shaped them further. Okay, I glued all of this together with a buttload of PVA glue. I covered up and reinforced with additional glue, bark scraps and dust. After drying, it looked like this. We have some bonus sneaky spots. Very good. Next I tried to carve an upright hand wreathed in flame symbol into bark. I quickly came to the realization that this won't work. Instead I took my trusty old cardstock. I gave this material a try and made a simple design and cut out the pieces carefully. Tricky but worth it. I made two symbols. The symbols will be attached to nicely shaped bark bits. I glued them on with PVA glue. Looks good. I attached these at the top of the stairs, making a mess as usual. While waiting for the glue to dry, I got mail. Lots of minis and stuff from the Eldritch Foundry. These Viking boys and girls are for an epic snow diorama that I'm hyping up by making you design your own minis. Link in the descriptions. Okay, to get a few dead, burnt trees, I collected dry branches from the forest. These will also have to remain unglued for shipping, so I'll just poke them in for the paint job. That should work very well. Before painting, I still decided to spice up the almost empty shrine's platform with four triangle-shaped bark bits. I made sure that minis still fit well. I expect some epic gameplay will take place, so that's important. Cover up the glue and we're good to go. Before painting, I also removed any loosely attached flakes of bark. Oh, and the light must also be taped up. 
Alright, so the idea is to leave some of the brown bark visible. I sprayed and after a while I got tired of the airbrush. It was way too slow. I'll use only brush from now on. For the sake of making these videos I'd rather use less tools. That looks horrible. Next I mixed a dark red and started overbrushing the rock surfaces and all of the stone formations. I also brushed the small rocks that are scattered around the ground. I used a brighter red to highlight all pointy bits and clear edges. Then I tried dry brushing a bit of grey and liked it. I brushed a bit on the stonework and a bit more on the ground. I was unsure at this point, so I distracted myself by painting the symbols with copper and then with gold. That should do it. Now I really hope that my attempt at lava will make all of this look good. It feels like something is missing now. Well, before mixing the resin, I painted the bottom of the lava river with orange and yellow. Yeah, this isn't that bad. I continued by mixing the resin. I'll make sure to wait for it to become a bit thicker. I mixed a bit of orange into the resin, hoping that it still stays somewhat transparent. I waited and then poured on the sticky stuff. No, I didn't. I waited too long. Well, I'll have to wait again. Perhaps I can use these chunks for another build. I mixed a new batch. This time I used a bit less orange to make the resin less opaque. Finally I poured on the resin. Next I mixed more yellow into the remaining resin, poured that in and moved about with the stick. This is definitely not looking like lava. Let's add some dark red to see what happens. This is starting to resemble some weird pasta sauce. But I think we can pull this one off. I took a few coals from the fire, then let them cool down completely. I made smaller chunks that I poked into my resin lava. These are the most matte black things you can get easily. What do you think? Is this working? I also sprinkled on some tiny bits and dust, which hides more of the tomato sauce. I had a good experience with coal in a previous build, so I thought it should work here as well. The sophisticated technique is to apply charcoal a bit everywhere. You can probably do this with a large soft brush as well. I already had black fingers and didn't care. The charcoal was also great for the trees. They became matte black with a bonus shimmer. Okay, while the resin hardened, I made loot. I cut off chunks from the first resin, then took a stick and together with super glue and some steel wire, I created the scepter of scorching and the quarter staff of living flame. I finished these mighty weapons with strong tone wash. If you like this, you can probably use colored scrap plastic to make your very own miniature weapons. Or go buy some tiny fake gems, and if you want to, you can also make the battle axe of burning. Okay, I'll stop now. Okay, even if we're on the plane of fire, we can add some flocking. I glued on plenty of small grass tufts, made from hemp rope. 
I placed these as groups around stone formations and near small rocks. If you try this, remember to separate the rope fibers well. I fluffed up my tufts after the glue had dried, then colored them with dark red and purple. First, I brushed all tufts with the watery red. Then I applied purple on the highlights of about half of them. Using the same purple, I added just a bit of color to the black trees. Good, this adds just about the color we needed. I also applied some under the trees for a subtle effect. Alright, fixative should keep the charcoal in place. Welcome to the elemental plane of fire. Before you is a charred landscape that inhabits strange fire creatures. Dead, burnt trees give contrast to the dull monotony of this featureless land. What the hell? Do, how do we even have trees in here? Well, magic, I suppose. This diorama was built for and inspired by the fire genasi monk Kindel. Have fun playing and congratulations on your new terrain. Okay, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.